Equestrious Mirage Dream Warriors by yours truly. Chapter 11 Nightmare of Loneliness. Hello? Rainbow Dash shouted, looking up from the cavern floor. The only sound that greeted her was the faint echo of her voice and a cold blast of wind. Stepping forward, she began to scan across the wide chasm for any sign of her companion. While on the path, Rainbow Dash couldn't help but take note of how the chasm or cave was neatly arranged. Just big enough for two ponies to walk in side by side and line with a reflective crystal. There you are! Called out lightning dust from above as he landed next to Dash. Rainbow let out a growl as he watched Dust land next to her. Where did you go and what were you doing? I was up there! Lightning dust pointed her head upwards. I was trying to see if this was a cave or not and where the fuck those walls end. Strangely, they don't. That's impossible. They can't just. And you gotta stop at some point, Rainbow argued, looking above her head. Trust me, I flew as high as I could go. Lightning Dust turned her yellow eyes to the skies. They don't end. That's just weird, Rainbow Dust said, shaking her head before taking a step forward. Come on, the each twilight's down this path, she commanded, turning away from Lightning Dust and making her way down the path. As the two pagans I walked, a cold breeze blew down the hallway making both ponies shudder from the cold. Hey, hey, is it getting cold here or is it just me? Dust asked, trying to shake off the cold. No, it's getting really cold. Rainbow Dash said, blowing off a puff of air and watching it form out of her mouth. Strangely enough, this is right before I established in my universe Pegasi don't get cold. Huh. Weird. It was this cold when we landed and... Go away! What was that? Rainbow asked, twisting her ear at the sound of the noise. What was what? Lightning Dust asked, already taking a few steps ahead of her blue partner. I just heard, go away! Leave! There it is again! Rainbow Dust said, looking from all directions. Lightning Dust tapped her head against her head. You're letting the cold get to you. It's nothing. No, I'm positive I heard, go away! Rainbow Dash held her foreleg over her eyes and back again, walking against the cold. Now I know you heard that! No! Dust walking forward. As the crown and the walls began to shake. I sure felt that! As Dust finished her exclamation, Rainbow's magenta eyes looked up in utter horror before taking flight. Look out! Go away! Lightning Dust turned her head to look at an oncoming black spike from the wall and ledge before it could impale her. From behind, two more spikes erupted from the wall in a two pigot's eye. Moving with a quick pace at the two flyers slipped under the spikes, and over two more that appeared over the wall. Moving forward with the speed of a squall, the ponies began to fly under, over, and around several spikes of various whiffs. Rainbow Dash managed to dodge three spikes by flying in a quick S shape, while dust flew above the three that slid hard in a vertical line. After several minutes of flying, the two found a spot on one of the bike spikes to land on and catch their breath. Okay, just one on Celestia's given Earth was all this, asked Dusk, holding her side with her hose as she panted. Wait, did you want to say that there were dreams of loneliness? I wonder if... Rainbow Dad stopped herself as he panted a little to catch her breath. All of this... Is it just her loneliness? No, how would you know that? Anastas came back up. Narrowing her eyes, Rainbow muttered, I know. So she turned to look down the path that he had been traveling down. Twilight! Can you hear me? I promise you, we'll never leave you. We'll be right by your side, always. Liar! Leafy B! At these words, the castle came to life with a flurry of images. We were stopping on a particular scene. The scene that could stop Dad's heart cold. Oh no. Not this one. Anything but. Come on, y'all. Princess needs us. We have a lot to think about. Rainbow Dad took a step back. Her mouth moved to her mouth in utter horror as the images of that day played over her. Twilight Lee Lee. She was interrupted by another repeat of that day, but this time was followed by another disturbing appearances. The 
Bears of the elements out in the reception, while twilight sparkle lay in the caves beneath the town. Forgotten. Twilight had been proven wrong about Canaan's. Bears to the lands beyond Conquestia. Friends in the place. The bearers, too focused on the party to see Twilight leave, get attacked, but do not care to look for her. Each one of the bearers walk away from a broken Twilight at the reception, forgetting all about her. Twilight, please stop! Das said, feeling the burning tears flooding her eyes as he slammed her hoof onto the black spike. She let out a few choked sobs as he whispered, We talked about this! We never! We would never! We couldn't! Rainbow da Das was taken out of her sobs by the low chuckling from her partner. <laughs> well, look at the hypocrite! All this talk about loyalty and friendship is nothing but utter bullshit! Game back up. Rainbow's magenta eyes narrowed in rage as he demanded with a growl, Say that again. Fine, Lightning said with a cocky grin. Lightning, turks, you wouldn't, Trixie's ghost said, watching Rainbow Dash slowly turn to face her fellow picnicists. You guys only pretend to be friends with Twilight, but in reality... Just cocked her head to the side with a smile. You'll abandon her the moment something better comes along. At that, Rainbow Dash let out an animalistic roar and charged at lightning dust, pushing the surprised Pegasus against the wall with her foreleg against Dust's throat. Though she tried her best, lightning could not pull the hoof away from her vulnerable throat. The blonde Pegasus began to let out chokes and gas her air as Rainbow Dash pushed a little further to the throat. Rainbow, stop! Trixie shouted, while the Pegasus continued to guess her head. You're going to kill her! If Rainbow Dash hurt her, she did his shoulder as he pulled back her left foreleg with a desire to punch dust. The blonde Pegasus could see the murderous intent in Dash's eyes and closed hers in response, trembling in fear as the cyan mare brought her hoof down hard at Lightning's head. At the sound of a loud thunk, Lightning dared to open her eyes once more to see Rainbow's hoof buried deep into the wall next to her. Clutching to the ground after Dash let her go, putting her hoof to her heart to see if it was still being, Dash looked up to Rainbow Dash as he panned to catch some air from her burning lungs. You, you could have. Don't talk like you know us. Rainbow Dash said with a calm anger. We had a long talk with Twilight after reception was doing. We were never really angry with her. Mad, sure, but not angry. We've been through hell together. Do you really think we would hate her after all that? Do you? Well, you know what I saw when I saw, saw her storming that day? I saw my best friend, who I thought was smarter than I was. One who could, I could trust to do the right thing. Attack and accuse an innocent mayor of being evil for the simple crime of being a bridalzilla. That wasn't, that's why I was the one I knew. That was just a little baby who was so enveloped by jealousy that she couldn't stand losing her precious BBBFF. It's what I knew would have gotten off her rub and came back with some solid evidence. Not, oh, I saw her eyes go green, though nobody else did. Rainbow Dash stepped forward towards us, fury blinding, building her eyes. But we still cared enough for her. We still loved her. And you know what we were going to do after she had her cry and went to her room? We would have found her, talked to her, forgave each other. We would have hugged and had a good long cry about it, like friends do. Rainbow Dash backed her partner up against the wall and pointed a hoof against her chest. And even if that didn't happen, even if Twilight never came back to the castle with the real cadence and we found her room empty, you trembling lightning tried to get out of sentence, but stumbled Dash. No, you don't get to talk. Rainbow growled as he glared daggers into dust eyes. I will tell you what we would have done. If we found her gone, we would have turned that damn city upside down hunting for her. If her Piggy Pie, <laughs> that would be a literal upside down. Where do you could use whatever connections he had? Applejack would be interrogating points on the ground. And me? Well, I would have been practicing how fast I could catch falling ponies. And if Celestia tried to stop us or said, She's been replaced. I would have pushed her in the face. Just ask. Oh no, because Applejack would have had dibs on that. I'd be pussy her in the vag, hard! Rainbow said, smirking and turned away. 
See, she's our friend. We aren't going to turn away from that just because of an argument. She was in real trouble. We would fight Celestia herself to save her. Maybe you would abandon her for something that petty. But I think that says a lot more about you than me. Unfurling her wings, Rainbow Dash took a deep breath, breath, gave herself a few good flats before taking off. Tracy got out of sight. She watched the prismatic blur go off. Maybe Luna was wrong. Maybe this was a bad team. Maybe I should wait. Tracy paused to see what light can just fly off. Where are you going? Look. I'm her wing pony, and I'm going to stay with her. Lightning Dust said, narrowing her eyes and taking off. Tenacious, aren't you? Tracy says he wants Lightning fly away. She began to fade. Her memory began to go over the past few dreams she's been in. Patience, happiness, wisdom, life, and tenacity. Virtues, just like him. I wonder, did you plan that, Luna? This little rant from Rainbow Dash, well, I don't normally put myself into my characters to have a good Arthur Avatar rant, but this one was a long time coming. You see, it's easy for some people to insult the main six because they're not real, but I can only imagine if Rainbow Dash heard some of the accusations that some of these people who have done care a lot... <laughs> Wedding fix fix and accusation fix said about her and her friends. I can only imagine Rainbow Dash would have her hoof to your throat. And I don't care what you think. A hoof from a, from a pony, a horse, hurts. A lot. And having somebody's leg or forearm next to your throat is going to hurt. A lot. Because you see, all these Carol Agassiz and the wedding fix, they all seem to revolve around this idea that the main six would have just abandoned Twilight just because of a little argument. No. They forget. Twilight was acting like a brat. She was acting like a jealous brat, and... I don't care how trusting you are of her. Unless somebody has solid evidence, and she's already proven to be possessive, you're not really going to believe them. Because there's always this chance that they may be wrong. What if Cadence was just a bridal Zilla? Twilight got really lucky with that scene. Because there's also a chance Twilight was just being a... that Cadence was just a bridal Zilla. Hell, Applesax has a large family, I bet he's seen plenty of Pridal Zillas, so has Rarity. Pinkie Pie's probably seen the same thing, has probably also been insulted by people who've had rages. This just goes to show that a lot of these people who complain probably don't get out as often as you may think, or have seen as many Bridezillas. But the idea that they would just abandon Twilight, or not check up on her, that's ludicrous. You mean to tell me that for some reason they wouldn't be letting her just have her cry and then go back to check up on her? Why? What's the logic behind this? It's obvious. They were going to let her have her cry, come back, talk it over like adults, have a conversation like adults, cry again, hug it out, and then go back. And if not, well, as Rainbow Dash says, point it out. They would turn over the freaking castle for her. Because that's what friends and people who have long relationships like the main six do. But hey, if you're the type of person who doesn't forgive a long-term friend for a small argument and is actually hateful for somebody doing one little mistake, what does that say about you? And what does that say about them, that they're able to easily forgive and forget their close friends and move on? Hmm? Maybe you should think about that for a sec. 
Far away from Tracy's body, Rainbow Dash kept flying over and past every spike that came after her. Occasionally, she would look behind to see Lightning Dust trying to catch up. Okay, you want to play that late, Dusty? We'll play! And with a few more flaps of her wings, the Saiyan Pegasus flew faster, using her stunt tricks to effortlessly dodge each spike that came at her. Giving one more look at her rival, her eyes popped up in shock as the spike began to near dust. Look out! She screamed as she noticed that lightning seemed to hover in the air for a few moments. With a quick turn, she banked to the left and pushed lightning dust away from the incoming spike. Thanks! Lightning said, smiling as she got up. Okay, what was that all about? Asked Rainbow Dash, her four legs crossed. Lightning just chuckled. <laughs> what was that? You could have dodged that spike easily. Why didn't you? Rainbow took a step back in horror as it hit her. You wanted to let that thing hit you, didn't you? So, Lightning Dust said, trying to walk away. It was stopped by Rainbow stepping on her tail. So, you're telling me that this was a suicide run for you? That you were going out here trying to get yourself killed? Why? Dash asked, clearing the tigers into Dust's soul. Why? You want to know why? Dust was asked, pulling her tail away from the Cyan Pegasus grip. Dead to hoof against her chest. Because ponies like you and Spitfire took everything from me! I have nothing left! Rainbow Dash caught her head to the side, confusing. What about the Shadow Bolts? Tracy said that was what she used to you to convince to join. Oh, sure. Dust rolled her eyes. Join a team of Wonderbolt Water Beasts that have just the sole purpose of just making the other team work better. What a prize! Turning away, I need to switch it to the dark void that was overhead, laying a regretful sigh. And you just told me why I have no place on a team of other ponies. Well, I just... When I said that, I... No, you're right. I stink at being part of a team. And I know that if I had been in your spot, I would have abandoned Twilight and not even tried to save her. I get it. I do. I need us to begin to notice a rock in circles with a hoof. When I was a filly, I admired the Wonderbolts. Who didn't at that age, right? That's how awesome they were and what they could do. So I trained, pushing myself day and day back to my limits and beyond. Then I got to the academy and met you. Pony was like me. But when I made that tornado, and I saw that you weren't like me. Just sighed and shook her head. You were my better. Better? Dash asked as she sat closer to dust. Yeah, my better. I could see it just in the way those five acted when they saw you. How happy they were when they were near you. I always try to bear myself and push my limits just for me. Because I wanted to be better just because I wanted to prove myself. Like you. You were different. You trained so you could be the best for others. You like to inspire points to be the best. And you push yourself to the limits because you love flying. Not because you want to be better than any pony else. Grandma Dad's raised a hope to argue but held back. Because I like being there for the ones I care about. And I love the art of flying. That's what I'm talking about. Me? I just saw how reckless I was being. Now if I was on a team, I would get somebody killed. And I couldn't live with that. <laughs> a setter came from the Blue Pegasus as he let out a sob. So I left. I began to realize there was no place for me. I could never really achieve my dream. So I gave up. It was not long I let myself die alone in that Manhattan apartment. No, I was going to let myself die like a winner. Be remembered like that. So when Tracy offered me that position, I saw my way to go out like I've always wanted. That's a stupid way to die! Rainbow Dash yelled. Suicide is a gutless and a coward's way out. Dying like that means nothing. And all it does is make you look like a coward for doing it. You're just hurting others like that. Yeah, I've got problems with suicide. Ever notice? What use is this, Rainbow Dash? I don't do anything to live for anymore. My dreams are crushed, my family's gone, and I got nothing to go back to. Lightning Dust screamed, pressing her nose against Dash. In the sun, the science mayor pulled her wings to her pulled out a photo. This filly's name is Skidaloo. Lightning Dust looked at the photo, and the young orange pigs is jumping in the air. Who is she? She's my adoptive... No. She's my little sister. Even if she isn't blood, she's my little sis, and I would do anything for her. Rainbow decided to put away the photo. Did she know she can't fly? <laughs> Weird, huh? I can't figure it out. 
One day I saw her feeling so bad about it, she was starting to act like you. Suicidal. She was ready to throw it all away because she couldn't fly. I told her that maybe one day she'll fly and maybe she won't. But she's still the most awesome pony I have met. Was that supposed to make her feel better? Does da Dasgo scoff. No, it was supposed to give her something to live for. Das said, walking to Lightning's side. See, I told her that even she couldn't be the best flyer, she still had me be on that scooter of hers. What do you to fly when you could beat every pony with those skills? I was trying to show that there are other things worth living for, and that is what you need. There's always something worth living for, even if you can't find it. Like what? Dust asked, turning her hair away. I'm about to ask put a huff onto her shoulder. Me. Whoa, I'm not gay! Dust said, backing away a little. Dust rolled her eyes. <sighs> not like that. I mean, you live to beat me. You already said you think I'm better than you, and that I beat you. Well, prove yourself wrong. Lead this little team of yours to new heights and make the Wonderbolts look like chumps. Beat me in speed. Do whatever you feel like it takes to make me a loser. Just start loving to become my rival and my better. You mean, make you my limit? Dust asked. Yeah, if you think I'm so much better than you, then beat me. Keep making yourself better until you can finally win. Dust smiled. I would love to have a rival like you. Keeping me on my toes and making me strive to keep my toes the best. But, then she held out her huff. I am not going to stand here and have a quitter as my rival, guy. I only want the best there is. Dust smiled, put her huff against Dust's outstretched one. Fine. Remember, I will always be there to beat you. So don't you quit either. No problem. Dad chuckled. He was slightly leak to her rival. And she took a glance over the shoulder of Dust to let out gas of sight. Lightning, look! Starting to look behind her, past Rainbow's outstretched hoof, Dust's eyes opened wide at the sight of a large, white glowing orb in the distance at the end of the chasm. Like after her chin, Dust began to think, That must be where the princess is! Hey! Rainbow exclaimed before setting herself into a lofty position. Her friends call her Twilight! Lightning smiled as it got to a lofty position herself. Right! Let's go see Twilight! Sadly, it looks like the video uh, is disconnected. Uh, the problems with fusing links and not paying attention to them. I have no doubt that Link was probably loyalty. But sadly, the video, the old video version of that has been taken down. That makes me a little mad. It lost herself into the air, with Rainbow falling close behind. Early Lee did not lose a song, however, as Rainbow Dash quickly caught up to her. Looking to her side to watch her chosen rival master speed, Lightning Nod began to try to speed up. Dazzy did coming spikes all the while. No longer were the two streaks separate. Now the two pigs I flew as one unit. Nasty tears his rhythm with perfect timing. The contrails now a mix of rainbows, rainbow, plus lightning's electric yellow. Each pig is moving in a speed that cannot be matched by any black spike or incoming drill. At times, a spike would almost hit them, but was quickly dodged by one or another's quick timing and thinking. This pace continued until they reached the end of the chasm and landed just at the entrance of a large, secret entrance. Your host touched the ground, and you're blown back by the mighty gust of air. Get out! No way, Twy! Rainbow Death shouted. Taking a step beyond the ring of ice and circled the room. We're not leaving without you! A oh! sharp pain shot through her hoof as it touched the floor. As he pulled it back to pick its solid circle covering the ice. Das, are you okay? Does Das, watching her as the ice melted off her hoof. Yeah! Rainbow Dash panted, looking back into the orb in the middle of the room. Hang on, Twy! We're coming in! No! You'll just abandon me! Like the wedding! Scraped the howling winds as the currents began to pick up. Rainbow Dash gave a shrug as he took another step forward. That again, Twilight? We've been through this! We are! She screamed as foot hit the floor, four like freezing just below the knee. Come on, Rainbow Dash! You've walked over a broken foreleg before. You can walk through this. Maybe that thought to herself as a few more steps forward. Foreleg freezing completely. Remember Twilight? We came to you and apologized for what we did. We told you we would never abandon you, remember? That we'd always be your friends. Lies. Lies. Lies! You'll abandon me again as soon as I mess up! 
That is a low manure, you know it. Ah! Death screamed in pain as the wind blew again, forming ice on her sides. Licking her wings, she noticed the blue tips began to collect on the ice. She isn't buying it, Dust said from outside the room. Mullet, get out of here, we can fly over. No! Rainbow Dash shouted over to Howling Wind. The wind's too strong for either one of us. As he turned and began to walk slowly towards the orb, the was freezing one by one. Twilight, does he remember? First thing I told you when you say you were worried Celestia might banish you or exile you, I told you we would be there too, no matter what. Does he would banish us too after what we did to her? I'll be the first one to punch her in the gut for even thinking of exiling you. With Applejack close behind me, Verity and Pinky would have to back and flares. Well, you don't want to see her mad. She chuckled before slipping on her frozen leg, collapsing to the ground. Voices phone chains, now carrying a bit of worry eyes. Lies! Now leave! You're starting to freeze! Panting, Rainbow Dash started to get up. The ice now covering her wings and trailing up her back. Don't you get it, Twilight? She said, voice strained as the ice encased her body. Snow, demons, gods, are you a Celestia herself? It doesn't matter who. There's nothing that'll stop us from coming to you. It's a lovely fight. It's one of their ties we get mad at you. That's life. But let's... Ah! <laughs> she screamed, feeling a crack forming on her leg. Let me tell you something. If you're in trouble, you can bet that I'll be there to stand by you. We all would. Stop it. Go away. Do you believe that there are my riffers out there who don't believe that friends actually do have arguments once in a while and that um, people do make up? Yeah. Idiots, aren't they? Stop it. Go away. Rainbow Dash was about to say something else, but felt a warm body by her side, helping herself. Like lightning dust? Kill my rifle tie, right? I gotta make sure she's alive. The blue pigs are smirked as she began to walk with Rainbow Dash across the ground. Rainbow shine seemed to flash in Rainbow Dash's eyes as she smiled, or she turned around, continuing her walk. You know what? <laughs> Think that under all that doubt and fear, you know that too. That. <laughs> Rainbow Dash grunted his tube near the Howling Orb. We've been through too much to let it end, because he had a little temper tantrum. Now you can separate us by death or just a thousand miles, but you'll not keep us apart for long. We go through hell through you, Twilight. And you don't believe me after all of this! So he said, feeling the ice coming over her as her hoof reached the orb. Then, just let me freeze. Her hoof reached the orb. In a blinding flash, the two Pegasi found themselves rolling on the cold floor, their bodies restored. Before Rainbow Dash could say anything, she found herself with the four legs of Twilight Sparkle, now pulling her into a tight hug. I am so sorry, Rainbow Dash. It was the memories and the nightmares. They kept reminding me of... No, I'm sorry for ever making you think that about us, Twilight. Rainbow Dash said, hugging her friend back and crying into her shoulder. No, I'm sorry. I still remember what you said and took it to heart, Twilight cried. No, I'm sorry. Hey! Dusty erupted. Can't you just both admit you made mistakes, but you forgave and forget, so let's just go home? I'm kind of cold. The two mares looked at each other before giggling as Twilight turned to a star and flew to Dasha's hoof. Now, it's all up to Trixie. Next time, my favorite chapter in this whole thing. <laughs>